Well, my name's Christopher Page, and I'm Gresham Professor of Music as from October this year. And I'm currently Fellow in Sydney Sussex College, here where we are, and Professor of Medieval Music and Literature in the University of Cambridge. Well, my series of lectures for this year is called Men, Women and Guitars in Romantic England. And what I'm going to try and do in the six lectures is explore the ways in which there was this extraordinary craze for the guitar. Men, especially women, played it. It's an instrument not unlike the modern guitar, but as you can see, actually really rather smaller in the body. The actual size is much the same. And it's, there was a, a vast amount of music published for it. People started to travel with it. And it has a place in musical life and indeed in social life that I think is not well understood. And it touches many important themes. And so that's what I'll be trying to do. And there'll be music, of course. I think this is an important topic because it's very, still very little understood. Um, most histories of music, for example, in the 19th century are, tend to be written, at least as referring to England, in terms of you know, the gradual assimilation of Beethoven and of a big classical symphonic repertoire. But of course, a lot of the music that most people are making most of the time is at home, in domestic circumstances, described by authors like Dickens and the Bronte sisters. And the guitar had a fundamental place in that. You see, it's not very difficult to play to a basic level. I mean, simple chords so you can strum to accompany your singing voice, you can learn to do that in a couple of, couple of weeks. In addition to which, a lot of guitars weren't very expensive. Of course, needless to say, this is a genuine 1825 guitar and cost me an arm and a leg. And this is actually a prosthetic limb I'm playing it with now. Um, so but that's why I think it's a, really a very important subject. It touches so many aspects of social and musical life. Oh, well, I think probably the chance to explore with um, a large and general public um, just what this instrument means to me and what it meant to many men and women, really, uh, up until, say, the, the 1830s and the coming of, of, of Queen Victoria. Um, and I just think the music is very beautiful and that the instrument itself has a very lovely sound. For example, if I can just very briefly explain, the strings are not modern strings, which, of course, are on a modern guitar, a nylon. These are gut, they're actually the intestines of animals, and the bottom parts are silk. And you pluck it, not with the nails, like a modern guitarist, but with the fingertips, like a lute. So the sound is much softer. And of course, one of the wonderful things about the guitar is you can get the contrast between that and that by simply where you touch it. So you have this orchestra in miniature. In fact, that's the exciting thing. And that was what was said at the time. It's a pocket orchestra. You can carry it with you onto a steamship, onto a boat, to a picnic, take it anywhere you like, into the garden, and you have your orchestra with you in a box. I think the audience that comes to these lectures will gain an understanding of a whole slice of life of their great, 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 great grandparents that they didn't know was there. Uh, buying music for guitar, playing opera favourites on the guitar, learning the instrument of course, often studying it with governesses. Many uh, professional governesses were teachers of the guitar. So there's a whole world to be recovered. And what I think is very important to understand is there's much more to this than just the guitar. I mean, the, the reason why I'm interested in it is, of course, I love the instrument and I love the music and I love playing it, but there's a whole universe around it in social terms, in terms of transport, uh, of experience, where people are moving to, how mobile people are becoming, how much money people have got in their pockets, how interested they are in things from abroad, for example, especially from Spain, that are slightly exotic, because the guitar, of course, is often thought of as Spanish. So there's a, there's a whole universe we're going to explore and unpack. With these lectures, I would really hope not only to broaden understanding of a fascinating period, really, in the musical life of, of England, but to enhance the public for what is, in fact, an instrument in its own right. I mean, the early romantic guitar is not some primitive forerunner of the guitar that's played now. It is an instrument in its own right, strung in a different way, constructed on the inside in a different way. Whenever, incidentally, I put this through um, airport security, I always run round to have a look at the X-ray to see. In fact, it's very, very simple barring inside, quite different to a modern guitar. So I would really like to encourage people to, to, to learn the instrument, for that matter, or to listen more to concerts where people play it, because it is a lost part of the soundscape of that ex most extraordinary of centuries, the 19th.